All right, team, what's going on? Here is another episode of the Macro Perspective. It's Coach Seamus. Coach Marcos. What's going <laughs> was that, on, team? Was that, was that your way of trying to lead me in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was giving the silence, let you chat a little bit. But we've got a good episode today. It's just the two of us. As y'all might have seen, there's been some micro bites and some some guests. We're getting a lot of guests recently, Marcos, and it seems uh, those have been picking up some traction. And um, mm-hmm. those are great, but I kind of like... You know, when it's just us two, we get to we get to groove and flesh out some ideas a little bit. And I, I thought it was great to save it for this call and save it for this podcast today. Um, mm-hmm. We've got some great topics. Let's open it up. The first topic we really want to talk about is a big, big thing in the news. It's been in the news lately a lot more recently, and it's made headlines in multiple ways, uh, is the concept of weight loss drugs, concept of weight loss drugs. What are your thoughts on that, Marcos, uh, with the new wave of weight loss drugs hitting the market and just kind of what you're seeing in the news? Well, I feel like our take on this, right, as we'll call ourselves performance health clinicians at this point, not just coaches, because we're having to be able to speak on this like highly, you know, relative to the the needs analysis that a a patient will come in with. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that I mean, uh, like bariatric surgery, I think someone gave an analogy like this. Hey, before you can do this surgery, you need to show me that you can lose, let's say 10% of your body weight on your own, right? Which is a normal thing that most bariatric surgeons will request of their patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, shouldn't that also be a requirement for people to try to do that and change a little bit of their lifestyle prior to getting these weight loss drugs? And I thought, yes. And what do you think? You know, it's interesting. It's, it's, it depends kind of situation for me because I freaking love fitness. I freaking love, you know, being dialed in with my food. And I, I love the challenge of something intense. And it's really much a big part of my identity. However, I try to empathize with the person across from me, such as our patients, such as our clients. And just to be honest with you, sometimes they're just not there. Sometimes they are, they are just not there. And no matter what you do, and for anyone that's listening to this call, if you're a coach or a person that's worked with someone with weight loss, like, you know what I'm talking about. You know that, like, no matter how hard you go, no matter how, how many texts, phone calls, uh, check-ins, workouts, meal plans you send them, it just doesn't work, right? It just doesn't work. So my thoughts are, I'm not against them. I'm up for anything. Really, to be honest, Marcos, I'm up for anything that will make someone find a way for themselves to become healthier, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, gearing any bad side effects, obviously, and we can get into that, but um, I'm I'm up for anything that can help a person shift. I'm I'm always up for it, right? Right. And so I think when I heard that, and it may have been another podcast I was listening to that talked about said thing about like that that basic requirement of, of trying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, you know, based on like, just simply have you, if you ask the question, have you monitored or trying to track your food? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that question was, would be no, we know that based on research that, you know, anytime you bring forth some sort of, uh, accountability of trying that, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, would, would also need to be done because you're going to report that with the coach. And again, too, like, I think my view is like, I'm going to be helping this individual. I know what I'm going to request of them over the next four weeks or, you know, uh, we'll say 12 weeks, right. In yeah, order to lose, yeah. let's say 10% of their body weight. And so I view that like, I'm still getting my teeth into them and talking of these things and, yeah. you know, to go right to that thing. Well, one, like, um, a lot of these clinics and are, you know, coming up and sprouting up like wildfire, it seems right. It really um, is. I know that our company has discussed uh, variants of it as well. Mm-hmm. And while there is the ongoing maintenance of your, you know, physician being on board, you still haven't paid for the product. Right. It and get we really were, pricey. Right. And while uh, Manjaro would be the newer one that hit the market was offering a um, factory rebate or a, a discount with a coupon it's that was like $25 or something like that. Yeah right as soon as that thing runs out for you guess what 
you now bump up your needs to now spending $450, $500 or more, depending on how much of that particular substance you would then need. Yeah. And if you look at the studies, guys, if you look at the studies, if you take it for a year, up to 25 to 37% weight loss. However, the moment you get off, and this is this is across the whole study. I think it was most people, if they didn't lock in the habits, mm-hmm. they gain the weight back or more. <laughs> <laughs> they gain the weight back or more. So um, the drugs we're talking about, guys, are what we call GLP-1 agonists. Um, basically, this is a semi-glutide. That's probably the most common known uh, mm-hmm. brand name, I'd say, non-brand name. Or a tercepatide, which is a newer one. But the brand names you're probably seeing on your commercials, guys, is an ex- Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, whatever it is. These things all really just work on helping type 2 diabetics really lower their blood sugars, their HbA1c. However, mm-hmm. they're, 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 you know, it, it comes down to the individual. So we're, we're really talking about the effects of it, the results that you're going to get, but then also from our side, the fitness, the nutrition, the lifestyle, right? Um, So I'll kind of come off here a little bit. And I'm going to continue on what I said. You know, I'm always up for anything that gets a a client or patient bought in, right? Right, Marcos, I'm always up for that. Mm -hmm. If that's going to have them buy in, I'm up for it. However, however, if you're working with me, working with you as a performance health coaches that we in the field we work in, I definitely want to make sure they're training a few times per week, right? I want to make mm-hmm. sure they're watching their nutrition and being accountable to it, whether it's food photos, macro tracking, whatever it is. Here's the reason why I've noticed this indefinitely. And I've had many conversations with our other performance health coaches in the field where they're like, well, my person lost 60 pounds, but 50, <laughs> they lost 60 pounds, but they lost 30 pounds of muscle, right? Mm-hmm. So it's half, half. So it's like you kind of go like, all right, they lost a lot of weight, but metabolically, are they are they even better for it? Hmm. So there's an argument for that, right? There's an argument for that. So that's why I would say it. I, I think it's a combination of both of these these medications and getting lights on. I, I personally have a client who was working out three times per week. He's lost forty pounds. He's down to sixteen percent body fat at six years old. It was really hard for him before, but he maintained the muscle, maybe a few pounds down. But he maintained the muscle through making sure he got his macros in and he was training. And then he used the Ozempic or the Wagovi Manjaro a derivative. He's like a perfect idea of that because he was following the lifestyle steps while also following the medication. Now, not everybody's on that. Like, wouldn't wouldn't you agree, Marcos? Like, they're not not everybody's kind of on that grind. Yeah, I feel like here's the thing why. I would caution people to want to use this and not also be open to creating the lifestyle change. Yeah. Right. You're still having the same cue mechanism reward type of thing going on. Right. You still have like Mm -hmm. that habit loop that is being facilitated. There's some sort of cue. Right. And Mm -hmm. you know, that cue then leads to whatever that, uh, that next step is. Right. And then the reward is like the feeling you get from the food. Right. Yeah. And if it comes off, well, that, that, that feedback loop can still remain the same. So you want to then find a way to like, oh my gosh, I have a cue of hunger. And that hunger thing, the first thing you go to is what we, we would normally coach anyways, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think that it, in addition to understanding, like there's like a psychological piece that we need to override as well. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's a big one that I'm like really recognizing when working with, you know, people utilizing this now. Um, and same thing, like, look, I'm not against it. Like, again, I'm going to approach the coaching the same way, right? Um, but I'm also then going to be like, they're like, man, I really full. I have like three people I'm working with currently that are using it. Yeah. And so now I'm getting my feet wet a little bit more with it and, and noticing the trends. And it's like, by nature, it's like cutting out a third of the, the like of their hunger. They're literally down, like based on like tracked food, a third of what it was. I think they're eating like maybe one. I think my clients that are on it. Like they're like, I eat one meal. I'm like, what? The f- <laughs> what? I, yeah, the, yeah. Your 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 appetite just is suppressed. I mean, the list of side effects is, is also quite long, and just like fifty percent chance I got a, of you getting it. Yeah, I got like they got like you got nausea, right? I think on the first one, I think a lot of clients are like, they're like, I had, I felt like I had to puke, or I did puke, or I just had to lay down because I was puking, <laughs> the vomiting, the <laughs> diarrhea. They obviously get the decreased appetite, um, and then there's some sugar issues as well. 
Um, and then they're talking about some increased pa uh, pancreatitis stuff. And then there was mm -hmm. a study on some thyroid cancers, but I, I think my doctor was kind of like, it, it was like insignificant. Um, and then you may get like, if you're injecting that peptide, obviously you're, you're kind of getting redness and those are some side effects, but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean, the main one is the nausea or the, the, the nausea or just having the reduced appetite. Right. I think this is a way for men to finally experience morning sickness. You know, that's just a good, like, at least we will now know what women feel like. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like on it and be like, I, I oh, get what uh, you're feeling, babe. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and part of me is like, you know, I, I want to know, I'll, I'm like, I need to live through experience, right? I need to coach yeah. through that a little bit more. Um, and as I've gone through being a dad and doing these things and blah, you know, like all those steps that weren't there when I was a young coach, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> like I was kind of like, now I'm the pot calling the kettle black because I, I have a hard time giving into some cravings or whatever that is. So, um, yeah. I will say like, you mentioned that thing though, about like, um, the reduction of appetite, it reduces cravings. It has a lot of things that like almost can be rewiring in the brain, but yeah. even me speaking to, you know, one of the other docs working for gave me some of his feedback that's using it. And he's like, you know, it's hit and miss because depending on your injection days, you may be like, I'm good for a few days. And then by the tail end of it, when the next one is due, you're like, yeah. it's like starting to like have, uh, the hunger is starting to creep back up. So yeah, again, this might be like, oh yeah, you missed one week or something because you're, you're out of town or whatever. Like you can yeah. have, you can lower that thing up. And so it's the, still the same issue. But I, I think, again, this drug was not initially designed for this right they're finding that there's mechanisms at play that yeah. are 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 now um surfacing as like a byproduct of it right mm -hmm. um and again too it's like i want people you want people to be healthier i want people to be healthier right and if this gives them the leg up i mean again uh i think it's great i also think too that um a lot of times people again we they track inappropriately mm -hmm. and if this brings food to an appropriate level um yeah shoot i mean dude i mean the upsides yeah. far outweigh the negatives in this place but like you said I, yeah the, the metabolic um issues that can potentially happen because you're still prioritizing food that is void of micro and macronutrients that your body needs that is essential i think that's that's really what we want to talk about here today right yeah, yeah. i want to talk about that i want to touch one thing though what i love what you said was like hey let's say they take it on a sunday and then maybe by friday saturday the next week they're feeling something Mm -hmm. I'm just be honest with you. I found a I found something in myself. I've seen it in over hundreds of my clients. I feel like Monday through Friday, everybody's great. Something happens like Saturday afternoon or Friday night, and it's like it's like it's like T-bone city, man. It's it's just like cheat town. Whatever, whatever goes, you know, flows. Like whatever flows goes. Um, you're right. I think a lot of people, and I love there's a chart about this. It's about that overall week consumption. If I can find this chart, I'll, I'll, we'll put it on the link, but it's like 1800 calories monday through friday 1800 1800 1800 right mm -hmm. and then weekend is like 5500 like friday saturday sunday and then back to monday i think right there that's like that binge eating type disorder or that kind of sporadic type disorder where it's like look if it's the overall level of things instead of going crazy on the weekend maybe you include some of these i'm going to put in quotes rewards or enjoyable foods for yourself throughout the week and that can be part of the plan i teach my clients this all the time so that they're kind of what you were kind of getting ahead at was what you're saying like these cues and signals and these rewards where mm -hmm. they can kind of get ahead of that instead of being so strict all week or strict for a certain time and then they just massively binge it and then they just ruin the plan then guilt themselves i would say hey for me i personally it's wednesday today recording this i personally like to have a little something on wednesday it's the middle of the week but it's not crazy amounts of calories. Um, it's still anabolic. I'll put those in quotes. Um, it's so good. Um, <laughs> anabolic snack. <laughs> anabolic snack <laughs> or protein heavy type of like desserts and things like this. Um, I found a few ice creams, by the way, that I like that. And then instead of it all being Saturday, instead of Saturday being like, for me, like a cheat day where it's like breakfast, lunch, dinner is like off the reservation. It's like, look, it's just dinner, maybe a little dessert, and then you move on. Now, with that being said, that's a little bit hard, right? Like that's a little hard. So, yeah, we really have to work on the cues. We have to work on timing. You know, people, it, 
whether it's a stress, the cravings, pe people have their routines and it's easy to fall into that. You have to be very mindful and kind of getting ahead. And again, if, if this, this helps them get ahead, that'd be great. Now let's move on to the conversation of micronutrient and macronutrient foods, not void of nutrition. Um, I mean, we can go down a whole list of foods, but uh, I mean, definitely having foods that uh, generally uh, without without marrying to certain types of diets, right? Without marrying to certain types of diets here, because we're trying to look at the macro perspective, generally whole satiating foods uh, that are not necessarily going to fill you up with so many calories, but are filled with a lot of nutrients, right? Um, protein and heavy, probably good whole fats in there. Um, having some good whole foods, some cru cruciferous veggies, um, good sources of fats, things like that. Um, yeah. What, what are your thoughts, Marcos? You know, um, so yesterday I was listening to a podcast about a doctor gentleman that was talking about, you know, basically a straight beef diet, carnivore, carnivore, oh, yeah, water, carnivore. Salt, yeah. but like salt only and only red meat. Um, no, no other derivatives of carnivore um, in terms of like autoimmunity. And it got me thinking about, you know, like, you know, like what is essential? What do we actually need? Right. So like yeah, when, it, when, we, when, yeah. we, when we look at this profile of, of protein and fats, right. And our body's ability to then go through gluconeogenesis and create carbohydrate and all those things. Um, you know, that was his, that was his argument. It was like, Hey, like, you know, I've seen great results and evidence of this thing in my practice. And there's, there's, there's a reason why I like recommending this. And I think a lot of things can be improved by that. Um, and I, and it got me wondering about like, again, like, how, how, how that person he's literally not a, a adding any supplements to it how is he how is red meat getting all this micronutrients isn't that counter to everything that we learned about for so long oh only have like sparing sparing amounts of red meat in your diet because that's yeah. going to elevate um is it is the, what was the theory triglycerides would be elevated as a result of it um it was, it was like a cholesterol fat. like your cholesterol yeah, it, was a, yeah, it was a cholesterol like thing right mm -hmm. so then in reading this right and uh, the one of the studies, you know, of like, uh, like the weight loss that's associated with this drug, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, have we done a head to head study of like a metabolic ward and controlling people's food to the same level? You know, again, uh, like, yeah, I, to, to this, to like a semi glutide, to a carnivore, mm -hmm. to another, to like a control. Um, I'd have to look at the studies. I'm not so sure. I feel like that would be an interesting one. And I know that's like really hard to like, Again, like That's, real world versus yeah, like world. in a lab. Yeah. But like, I think the thing is, is that everybody wants to be very dogmatic about a particular approach because they can't apply it in, a, like it's most applicable in the real world. And therefore, like you just said, taking this thing is something that you have to remember once a week. And then the rest of the stuff is just kind of a byproduct of taking it, which is fantastic, yeah. right? But it really isn't that simple, right? Like, it's like saying like, hey, like the byproduct of taking testosterone just makes you fucking jacked. And we know that, that ain't the case. Though. It ain't that. It ain't that simple. And it's not this. That's the same case too with even even having the GLP one agonist or any diet. Um, well, first off, like you have to find what's the form of restriction. One of my favorites from Lane Norton is like you have to find a form of restriction, whether mm -hmm. that's intermittent fasting, carb only, or fat and protein only, or whatever diet that is. Like you have to find a type of restriction. That doesn't even feel restrictive to you. Personally, for me, mm -hmm. I find counting my macros with a flexible diet not restrictive for me because I hit everything I need um, and I get to have snacks and I get to meal prep it. It works with my schedule. Um, it's a little bit tighter than than the other ones because it's not about time. It's not about foods. It I, I get to eat whatever I want. It's just I have to hit a certain level of it. So it's a little more flexible um, mm -hmm. with but it's just portion control, really, at the end of the day. That's that's what so it's it's either you, you, you either control time, you either control the foods you eat or you either control the portions. I do really well with controlling portions. I don't necessarily do well mm -hmm. with controlling time or the foods that I eat because I can I personally like to eat whatever. I just control the portions of it. And I don't care about the times that I eat. Like I just don't eat two hours before bed. But other than that, like. I just control portions. That's what works best for me. Um, yeah. And that's a form of restriction that works best for me. So in the real world, how does that work for me? Well, you know, I go to work, 
got like that nine to five. I, I, I don't necessarily have a family, so it's not like I'm sitting down for dinner, but I do try to sit down for dinner with my lady. And, um, but also at the same time, like if I'm working virtually from home, I can control those parameters a little bit more instead of cooking a few meals for three days uh, and putting it in Tupperware. I can just kind of cook as I go. I have that ability. Um, but maybe for some people, they like, for example, time restricted because they have to go to work. They got to get the kids in the car, drop them off to school. And it's easy to like not eat until they're like sitting at their desk after a long day of work. And it's like, OK, cool. I, I eat at this time. It works for me. Or they just don't eat carbs. And they're like, if I eat carbs, it messes me up. OK, cool. You know, so it really comes down to like it just comes. I, I think it, I personally think it comes down to personal preference. Um in those cases, right? In the real world scenario, because again, if you want to bring it back to a metabolic ward compared to the GLP-1 agonist and stuff like that, it's a metabolic ward. You're in there for a week and they control everything, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, remember, I feel like this is the other thing too, is like identifying st uh, statistical relevance in something is, I mean, what is it? 3% is technically what you need for it to, to truly be like a nominal finding, right? Yeah. And granted, like you just said, like, again, you put these people out in the real world, you just give them the thing, and then we're seeing this improvement. Of course, of course, that's, you know, that's, I feel like that's, I mean, isn't that just America, right? <laughs> let's find the easiest way out of something. You know, let's not put in the hard work because we don't, we don't have time. But that's the thing is like, you're going to have to make time for your health at some point in your life, right? Like at you just said, some like, point you have to. And I really think that three things to control that you just said, you're controlling portion, you're controlling time, you're controlling food group, right? Is that what you said for the third one, right? Yeah, those, like are, the food, only food types? those are the only things you can really control about your food. That's really it. I mean, yeah. I mean, again, that's that's part of it. And again, like maybe you, but I think it's in the word undulate or modulate one of those things, like depending on particular things that are going on in your life. Yeah. For instance, yeah. it might be like, so yesterday was the travel day to DC for me. I'm like, you know what? Let me just try eating nothing but protein for this day, like relatively yeah. lean protein. And let me see how my appetite is because I've been struggling on the plane. I've been traveling eight hours on this plane. And it's like the only time I get off. It's like, I mean, dude, every time I go to Kansas City, I'm like, I mean, we're like, there's nothing. There's, you know, it's like, there's nothing <laughs> I'm like looking at the CPK. It's about to close. And I'm like, mm, you know, no, 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 no. And, so yeah. I'm like, well, you know what I can do though? I can hit up Trader Joe's before I leave my house and I can buy Trader Joe's there. And I could, and even if it was Columbus or New York, wherever else our centers are, I'm like, yeah, let, yeah. Me just, let me just try, let me, let me create this thing, right? I got to create my unique control. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally had the top throw line that Trader Joe's has. I bought two of them um, and I ate one of them at like lunch and then the other one like at dinner, some carrots. And that was it. And I'm like, Hmm, that actually worked really well, right? That yeah, was yeah. my little, that was my control that I brought in as a result of like all these other failed attempts with like even macros. I'm like, I'm so worried about getting like, you know, my carbs in there too. Problem is, is that like, you know, the, the snack ability and the sensation of those foods are far greater, especially in the air. You're fucking bored. Dude, I read a book and a half on the plane ride yesterday. Good like, stuff. Good stuff. You know what I mean? Like, uh, speaking of, I read, I read winning and then I read the other half of the, uh, the power of habit and i'm like you know Charles okay Duhigg, like, baby Charles did, yeah. i'm like now i understand what shane was talking about about Duhigg and like his approach to like that because it's like, to, I'm like yeah compared, compared to, to a normal habit habits, book. yeah yeah, yeah so different right there was awesome yeah so different because it's like more of like case studies and relevance and stories related to things that are related to that and um but again too like i felt sharp i felt focused and like i'm trying to like again pay more attention to like my own like cues in that time in the air as a result of the food because again this realistically i think when it comes down to it we just all this just lack control right you have to set restraints you know and yeah. again like I, I i'm not saying i was perfect over it i thought that i could do it with my macros on those days but i'm like dude like eating a pound of top sirloin in the air that's cold it's a it's a lot of like i actually felt really full right yeah, and so that was that was my unique element with food and the yeah. control that I that I could again thought it would need to be macros. I'm like, no, actually, my calories will be much lower if I just focus on one macro on this day. And 
dude, sure shit. Like I'm not even sure I can get time to train today because we we're doing this, right? Yeah. Uh, I have other calls I have to get to. By the time I finish the last one, maybe if I'm like at the gym by 7:30, I could do that. Um, and then I'm like, I never train at that time. I'm usually first thing in the morning, but like to train it. 5 a.m. Eastern time. That's 2 a.m. <laughs> Vegas time. F that. Yeah, you might just get a walk in today. Still get your 10,000. I mean, like one day of lifting won't kill you. Um, not lift. But I, I like what I'm, you said I mean, there. Yeah. You know, there, well, there's just restricting for one thing is good. And then also at the same time for people like kind of listening to this, like, well, these guys are tightening it up. Why don't they live a little? It's like, well, you know, we're trying to get lot. to our goals. You know, I, I, I live a lot. lot. <laughs> I live a lot. Like, I love doing all this stuff i like doing all this stuff and um i you know just to be honest i think some people need to remember that like live a little like maybe some people like doing this stuff like that's how they like to live and like it's serving their goals and they like to challenge themselves like watch their food and stuff um i do want to point out something that is super super crucial i think what you said there is true i think we don't have as much willpower as most people think um let, i'm just talking about like the fitness industry uh, in, in in general people that are super fit um even myself or people that you see i think people can get it wrong right marcos where they're like oh these guys have a lot of willpower or self-discipline and it's like no <laughs> actually no not really <laughs> like like i actually just enjoy training so training to me it's my it's my love, so I can do it easily. Um, watching foods and stuff like that, I enjoy it, but it does take me some willpower to be like, if I'm in an environment where there's freaking Oreo cheesecake, I'm gonna have that Oreo cheesecake. All right, like it's not, it's not like it's it's the end of the world. Um, however, however, I think what people need to realize is the difference between having it once. I'll use like Thanksgiving as an example. It's like leaving Thanksgiving where it's at instead of Thanksgiving leftovers, the next Thanksgiving, Monday rolls through, you're still eating all the pie. Like instead of like it being a two week splurge, it's like leaving it once. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. To get to your goals. And I think having constraints, whether it's a time constraint or like you're saying like, hey, I can only eat protein today. I did that too. I had like a birthday dinner the other night with some friends and they had that Oreo cheesecake and I knew it was going to be there. So I said, All right, I'm going to get a good workout in. I'm going to hit my 12,000 steps. I'm going to mm -hmm. only eat protein throughout the day. Um, and then all my carbs, I was still under calories, even though I had the Oreo cheesecake when I tracked it all. And I was like, huh, interesting. Um, but I felt, you know, but I felt great. So it's, it just kind of comes to show like, like, relying on willpower is not necessarily the best idea because how many decisions do people like have to deal with every day? Like a thousand billion decisions that they have to make, like run everything on autopilot. Why do you think I wear black all the time? Black pants, black shirt, and just black shoes. I just don't want to make decisions around like no, <laughs> inoperable yeah. things. You know, and I think, I think like you just said, it's like living because we like to live a lot, right. Or have the flexibility to live quite a bit or we're, we're, we're constantly being a, like, but we also want to look a certain way. We also have a certain like characteristic and standard we need to uphold relative to our positions. Right. Yeah. yeah. If, if I came into the job telling people how to eat and I didn't look a certain way, right. Like, obviously like I'm like a lot of my restraint because it is because of work. Right. And it's okay to like lean on that. And if you feel like you're in a job where it's not allowing you to do that, then maybe find one that does because, you know, you want to be, you want to be exceptional in the standards that you're doing. And again, like I'm, I'm, I, I, I'd like to travel, right? I want growth. All right. I'm, I don't, I'm, my wife will tell you this until she's blue in the face. Like Marcos is the most unsettled professional I've, I've probably ever met. Like in our relationship alone, it's like, I'm always juggling so many things, right? it's probably to my detriment if I'm being honest. Right. But it's just like, that's how my mind works. And same thing with kind of the nutritional approach. It's like, man, I always want so much variety. I want to juggle. I want to cook a recipe. Like this is, I'm like, how do I make this thing taste good and also be in the zone? Right. Yeah. 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 And um, so, yeah, like it, it's, it's never, it's, it's always because it boils back to like, Hey, I'm like a, probably a fat kid at heart. Right. Like I, I'm like, I, I, same. I had, I had one time in my life where it was like, 
I, again, I look back at the photos and I'm like, God, that wasn't that long ago where that was like an easy standard to do. But then I'm also now telling myself, look at the body of work that I was doing at that point in the time, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It was literally like nine miles of walking a day on a college campus because I had to go from class to class. And it was like, didn't even know. I didn't like, it was just, it was stupid, right? Double days of training. So about three, four hours of training a day and mm -hmm. precisely hitting the numbers of calories that were supposed to help me with composition and output. Like yeah. I had so many variables so tightly controlled and again, real life hadn't smacked me in the face just yet. Um, and then when it did, I kept that standard alive of like of the food thinking and identifying with two other things, you know, that were not, were no longer happening. Um, and so of course it's like, yeah, I would love to eat 4,200 calories or 4,500 calories a day, you know, but like, I was just not that active. Um, and yeah. I mean, don't we see this all the time in, you know, Ex professional yeah, see, athletes. Yeah, right? see all the my ones... clients that are ex professionals are like, yeah. they're like, I was so lean in college. I'm like, yeah, because you were walking like from campus to campus, dorm to dorm. You know, um, food was sparse because you weren't eating like you're eating now. Like you had like your meal card probably. <laughs> you know, you yeah. could only go breakfast, lunch, dinner, and what you were, you know. And then I mean, I was an athlete in college too, so it was like I just posted up a video of myself from nationals and wrestling. I was like, damn. Like it was lean, <laughs> like it was lean, you know. Um, yeah. and that was only like five years ago, but like, yeah, I was walking everywhere. Um, but I think I want to talk about that. Is I've been telling my clients, like, I'm sitting down right now, but like, one of the biggest things I invested in, I think, honestly, I saw that I saw your little walking pad at work, walking pad, <laughs> standing desk. I have it in my office, I have it at the house. Uh, we're getting one for my girl. Um, I don't have it for this room just because the setup here, but I have one downstairs. and. I'm getting, you know, my walking in while I get on calls, while I'm doing work. And most people are like, well, isn't that hard? Isn't that like hard to kind of concentrate and do work? I'm like, I mean, it depends. But, you know, once you get walking and the machine doesn't work for you pretty much, you're just moving. And then at some point you're just kind of typing away, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and and when you can do that kind of on autopilot, it's not like it's not like, you know, I ask a lot of my clients, hey, can you try to hit, you know, a few thousand steps per day, whether that's eight thousand to ten thousand. Instead of it being like, hey, I work out in the morning and at the end of the day, I got to go on this walk. And it's like this two, three hour event every day. Right, Marco? It's like what they'll do is they'll just walk throughout their day while they're while they're working, you know. And next yeah. thing you know, they they come home and it's like, oh, I already finished everything. I'm done. Oh, yeah. Bye. It feels good to like cross it off the list. And if you can, yeah. again, like you'll want to be able to like taper that up or down relative to like the goal. Right. Which is yeah. a really unique thing. And. I had a client that just got it. She's like, I got like an extra 15 K or 1500 steps today, like on the day one. And I'm still learning how to blend it in my work day. Yeah. And that's like, you know, that's like 15 minutes that was basically dedicated to, to doing something, you know, that wasn't originally there. And again, to like kind of, you know, going back to like the main point of this conversation is like lifestyle is something that I'm always going to advocate for in addition to whatever else that is need, like based on the yeah, clients yeah. or patients needs analysis. And again, I'm going to be there to support every step of the way. The three people yeah. that I can think of off the top of my head that are currently using the GLP one, you know, stuff, right. They're using, I want to say it's the, you know, it's the compounded version that we offer through our, for, yeah. through our company. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm just observing, I'm, I'm a casual observer of the science at this point. They're like, yeah, I just, I'm 1800 calories and I'm good. And then, you know, they still are having a plateau at some point. And it's like, do I just go lower? I'm like, well, is your hunger facilitating it? Are you getting your protein? I'm still asking the same questions I would with any I still other ask person. the same things. Yeah. You know, um, it's interesting. And, I would even actually like be like, oh, 1800 and you're plateauing. Let's eat more. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I would do that. I'm like, let's eat more. And I've gotten some people to eat more and they lost weight. And it's kind of weird. I don't know why. I'm, honestly. I'm, oh, well, that, that's the thing is like, there's no reverse dieting that's going to be able to happen with people on the drug to then help like maybe have a little more energy and output in their gym. Because guess what? That's like, what I was thinking. You know, like th that, that's something that's kind of unique here. It's like time and time again. We've seen people get to that place where they become metabolically adapted yeah. with low calorie and you add some food back in there. Guess what happens? They start moving more. They start burning a little bit more relative to how yeah. they feel. They, they and, like doing their chores. They're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to walk the kids. <laughs> dude. And again, like 
I think that's, I mean, I talked to one of the patients today. He said the same thing. I've been so good. I'm under, but I'm moving. I'm just so motivated. I'm tired of being a fat ass is what he said. Like, I was like, good. And he's not on one. He's, he's just simply going at it. Like I got the DEXA scan. It's time to make some moves. And I like, I love and he's it. just like, I'm a, I'm a, and again, like how many times have you heard this? I'm an all in type of person. You know, I can't believe I let myself I mean, get to that point. On, honestly, I would <laughs> say counting on my, both my hands, if I had a mill for every time someone says I'm all in, <laughs> I'd have $99 million. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's like, duh, of course. That's why we're all here. We're all the same way. I think it's just psychologically speaking, we're, we want to be all into something all the time. Yeah. But, you know, again, yeah. like today, it sucks. Like, oh, I might not be able to train. I'm like, it's one day. Like, I miss leg day. <laughs> like, in true bodybuilder fashion, I'm just going to skip that. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I agree, dude. I think, like, I'm, yeah. I'm an all like, I'm an all in person too. Mm -hmm. I just think that people need to learn how to hang out in the gray and hang out in the discomfort and kind of like you, kind of like me, learn how to make decisions that will serve them in an environment that's totally foreign. Like, shoot, I got to get on a plane today. What do I do, coach? Protein choices only, like you did, right? Okay, cool. I like to teach my clients, shoot, coach, the only thing that's close by is a subway. What do I do? Get a protein bowl, veggie it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, got, yeah. I, I, as I work with my clients, I work with my clients in a way that's like, look, like, for example, one of my clients, best clients ever, love her, was at a gym that I used to coach. She was the first person I never met in the real world that lost 100 pounds. This is during COVID. She lost 100 pounds in a year. She had to drop off her kids to baseball all the time, and she worked two jobs. She worked one nine to five, but her husband kind of had like a like a Craigslist business, like reselling like furniture or something like that. And she'd like sometimes help, but she'd have to drop off the kid, do this. And she's like, coach, like, what do I do? I'm like. I'm not going to tell her to go meal prep. That's the most idiotic thing I would tell her. Like mm -hmm. she knows how to, she needs to have, she needs to have some responses to being like on the road between these streets and be able to have an option. Oh, by the way, because I knew where her son did baseball. I was like, there's that subway down the street, get this, get that. And then she's like having subway once or twice a week. Oh, by the way, on the days that you're with your kid, you have your subway, right? But can you walk the 30 minutes while they're in practice? And she did that. She's just, constant did constant things and she had calls on her phone while she's yeah. doing that practice and like it she made it work somehow with her life and that's the thing where it doesn't have to be perfect you just have to be flexible because that was not a perfect plan at all that's not a perfect plan at all but it was a plan that was perfect for her and we had to find that we had to tinker constantly tinker uh because life constantly throws things but if you could if you could just say one thing I think in the real world for this one, I think is being flexible and then having a constraint when life throws at you. So, okay, it's Friday. The wife wants to go out. Shoot. I still want to go out, but I'm going to put a constraint only pro. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of have yeah. like that thought in your head, you know? And again, like, I mean, I can get a high level of satisfaction with just a meat only meal. Like Same. I've always been that way. Um, you know, and maybe I'll opt for like a slightly tastier one that I'm not normally getting. Granted, last time I went to a steakhouse, Get they managed to steak. <laughs> they managed to they managed to screw up a little bit of that for my for the wifey. Um, but you know, nonetheless, like I, I think I think again, like there there's what is it? There's levels to this shit, man. There's levels when it comes to being able to figure out where you're at at a particular time. The level of right now is like Hey, I want to do this competition in uh, in April. You know, late April. And damn, by the way, I need to double check that. Uh, um, <laughs> you need to you need to put out your talk, your competition training. <laughs> no, because I told someone else that I would be uh, doing wanted to do something like maybe the weekend before, and I didn't consider that like, oh, um, yeah, I I, I I didn't consider it could potentially be the same date. So I'm like, oh wait, I need to double check that. Oh, yeah, so double check that. Me. Double check that. <laughs> um, but you know, right now it's like. Um, I want to be winning in the journey. I want to be winning in life and yeah. in the event. And I want to win in the journey to get there. Right. Um, yeah. Which was also the book that I read on the plane out here was winning. And it's like, you know, all these things like winning is a very unique thing because it's going to change how people view you. It's going to change how these things are getting done. Right. Um, and again, like it, it, it's just, it's, it's so interesting because I, I think a lot of the times too, the only way people think that they're winning is if they've lost the weight. Right. I'm like, 
that's one win, right? We need to be, how do you that's win after that area. win? Right. Yeah. It's like you're constantly like, you know, it's a, it's a marathon of sprints, right. Is life, right. You're sprinting to some sort of event or some sort of, um, some sort of thing. You're, you're, you're diverting a lot of time and effort. And again, your most valuable resources into this thing, which is the weight loss. Right. Um, but again, too, it's like, if you, if you learn those conditioned behaviors, you, you recondition the habits to meet, um, expectations based on what the next quarter brings, right. P nutritional periodization, essentially, you can yeah. win out. Like there's nothing wrong with having a period where you, again, it's a lot of travel, a lot, maybe a lot of eating out, a lot of whining and dining, and you're growing in your financial space. Right. Like, but again, it's like, then everybody just does it in excess all the time, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. It's just finding a way to make it like part of your goal without <sighs> it being too overbearing. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing. Like you just said, finance is like, where finance is like, not every conversation is transactional because you're trying to make sure you get your finances, you know, like you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're focusing in the right areas. You're, you're trying to dial in. But um, since we were talking about it, I guess that's our um, icon of the week, huh? It's going to be Tim Grover. That's yeah. Right. We can do, we can do him. We can do my little out of the, out of the. Yeah. Let's do it. Out of, out of order. It. Right. Yeah. yeah. I like it. <laughs> Go off the cuff a little bit guys here. Um, Tim Grover. Well, we're gonna bring it. I got a way to bring it back though. Um, we'll as we're, we'll bring it back on the the, the product of the week. So, uh, you you want me to share? Yeah, sure. If you can. All right, one second. I'll I gotta pull them up. Usually, you're the one that's all tech savvy bullshit. Um, just <laughs> <laughs> I can pull them up. I can. No, but I like can... I like the book. I like. Uh, I mean, I listened to a recent podcast with him, and then one of the last podcasts with Kobe. Um, just to reframe, guys. Tim Grover is what he was one of the coaches for kobe kobe michael jordan lots of other people and you know i think the way that he went about articulating high profile people and he's like look like we're we're here trying to i'm here trying to make their life better if they ask me to post about it like for clout or they need it in there to help them with that um you know that's going to be you know important i want to respect that behavior and it's like you know now he has all these like stories to share and I actually can't do it right now. Um, with Chiron, I got it. I got it. I'm so show, because I'm show that. I didn't have a Chrome as an available one. Um, so this is Tim Grover. There he is with the Kobe. And guys, um, I live in LA. At the time that Kobe passed, I literally was like blocks away. Uh, I I lived near Calabasas. That was a mm -hmm. that was a rough day. You know what was weird about that day? Uh, Marcos was it was a foggy day and I was like something feels off I get out of my car and as soon as you know it people are texting me like yo Kobe's gone and like it's on Instagram I'm like I was like nah, you're like you're like fake news this is fake news no way oh I, I was I was kind of like no way but then like we looked it up and all that and I like had to call my friend who was like a big basketball guy and it's weird because like I don't know Kobe like I've only seen like two or three of his games and I was kind of near him before um it's his work ethic like, man i think it's, it's just his, because it's, it was like he was our our generation's like mj right like everybody talked about michael jordan kind of being an asshole and apparently even when they did the last dance like it, it wasn't always well received by particular individuals because of yeah. again like that drive to win and come to find out kobe was you know taking notes from mj and communicating with him regularly because same thing it's like i want to be as great if not greater than that person yeah. right like exactly. and i know what you mean because like it happened i was like fake news there's no way bullshit right? yeah it's kind of weird but i called my buddy up he's a big big thing of basketball and it like like again like he doesn't know kobe personally obviously and stuff like that but like that's probably a big reason why he plays basketball it's a reason he watches the guy you know we look at these guys they're icons and it's like i mean i you know, basketball was one of the biggest things for me when I was younger and I used to play it with my family and like, um, you know, seeing Kobe do like a 360 dunk when I was like 12 years old was like, or, or not even 12, like eight years old. I was like, I was like in my face, like, dude, this guy's insane. And then, yeah, it's kind of weird. And obviously I'm an LA, LA rep and it's just like, oh man, like it hit, it hit hard. Cause it's like, bro. Yeah. Wow. And now obviously his daughter too. Um, wow. As a father, dude, like, it choked yeah. me up then. It chokes me up more now rereading some of the stuff that was going on. And I mean, it's like uh, you, you created a system, uh, you know, and he created a habit loop of like, this is how I'm getting to 
Staples Center, you know, now crypto.com arena, right? Um, th this is my like in the zone. This is how I'm doing, you know what I mean? And like now he's, you know, again, to be able to do that, to like create this, you know, synergy to perform at the highest level. I mean, man, yeah. like think about it. Like as a kid, I'm like, I don't think anybody was like shooting a ball and saying MJ. It was always like a fadeaway jumper. Kobe, you know what I mean? Kobe. Like, <laughs> the fact that, that you can like literally think of like an action relative to a person's name, right, is, is crazy. crazy. And the and again too, like the fact that like the, in reading this book, with reading win, winning and listening to Tim Grover and why he's like yeah. my why I chose him as the icon of the week is like he's very articulate in the matter of this this idea that like. It, it almost rubbed me wrong reading this book, right? I'm like, like tell, tell me about that. Cause I haven't read the book in its entirety. I've just listened to some podcasts. What is mm -hmm. it that you're getting from it? It's and like, what, yeah. It's like winning is always gonna, winning is always gonna be something that you're, it's like practically unattainable, right? And like mm -hmm. you, you're you, just cause you've won doesn't mean you're still winning, right? And like winning is going to then, uh you know it's 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 no different than the other podcast of like there is winning is the resistance right everybody is just identifying this this entity and how you're constantly after it right and again he's like you have to constantly win in sprints right he's like you, you think about it a marathon you still win a marathon by being the fastest person there right yeah like yeah you may have won because you did the event in the beginning but like the drive comes from like winning but what rubbed me wrong is like, he's basically saying in order to become these individuals, you have to be, you have to take it as if winning will never be enough. And I'm like, if that isn't like something I just don't understand personally, right? Like there is enough for me. I know when enough is enough, right? I, I think yeah. I can say that I can effectively still be winning in the game of life, even though it may not be for financial gain or for, you know, mm -hmm. uh, only familial gain or whatever it is. Like, there's something that I'm like there. I I need synergy, right? So like, maybe it was rubbing me wrong because it was calling me out in areas. It's like, yeah, you're gonna have to keep winning it over and over and over. And just when you think you've gotten there, there's <laughs> another mountain. You know what I mean? It's like you summited you, you summited Mount Everest, right? Cool. Now you gotta do 14 other peaks that are just as high in order to be, be, like be relevant or even worse. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you're like, who was the I, uh, the gentleman that did the the, the 14 peaks and whatever that like the six month span, right? Yeah, that on guy. Netflix. I forget his name, but like, again, like, I think it's just human nature to constantly like go about winning to an exceptional level. And I'm like, well, it's cool though. You know? And like, it's like something that's motivating. I'm like, I'm almost, I don't know. Like, I'm like, the, the, it was a good read. And the fact that it was like, kind of like not how I would want to perceive it, but that's why I like it. No, like, I, I like that. I, yeah. I agree. I agree in wholeheartedness because. Okay. Like being a wrestler, like, as an athlete and a wrestler, like particularly, like I had to go to great lengths just to win. And then here's the the, the mess up thing about winning, Marcos. Guess what? What I would think when I would win. Guess what I would think. What? I'd basically think like, okay, you were you did what you're supposed to do. Like you know, I didn't celebrate that. <laughs> I didn't sell because it was like the way I was kind of thought about winning was like, all right, you did everything in practice that you're supposed to do on the mat. All right, good job. You won. Move on. Like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never celebrated wins, particularly. I would always be like, all right, what's the next thing? Like, what's the next tournament that we're gonna try to get to? Like, what's the next thing? It's a it's a it sucks as a mindset because it's like, I mean, it's 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 give and take. It's like a it's like a drag, it's like a double-edged sword because it's like you did a good job. Yeah, you get a pat on the back, but really at the end of the day, it's like, oh yeah, there is that next thing, you know, and then you gotta go win it, the it, next thing and the next thing. Yeah, and then the next you have thing. To it's win kind it of again, a, you know, and yeah, it's I a mean, hard thing, and you can burn out really easily. I'm not even talking about just wrestling or basketball. I think like just in life general, like having to constantly like repivot your life to like, okay, what's the next goal? What's the next and it's just kind of like this hedonistic treadmill, right? Like we're just never satisfied. That's the human condition. It's like just never mm -hmm. satisfied with anything. <laughs> that's a hard, that's the hardest. What is the hardest thing to to master is like the you have to master the fact that like when's the moment you just didn't want not anything just the concept of want <laughs> like what <laughs> yeah dude the human condition and winning and again like tying it back to like the center topic of this day it's like people want to win in the game of their body composition and uh, apparent supposedly their health honestly I think that like a lot of the times it is viewed as like 
you know, my self worth is purely what I visually look like. Right. Yeah, it um, is, especially with like it, Hollywood and stuff like that, you, you know, and again, the, I, like more of the instant gratification of society as a whole. Right. So again, too, like these, these things are, it's, it's a very interesting thing about like you just, when you think you're on top of the pedestal, right. You could, you're just a big fish in a small pond. Right. And, then, yeah. and that's like, again, like to me, I'm like, that's how that's how it read that's how it was um how i'm perceiving it again too like i felt like man is this book is kind of telling me i'll never be enough and it's like it's not doesn't mean i don't want to continue to work hard for things that help me get to feeling mm -hmm. that i'm mm -hmm. uh, accomplishing things and trying to win the next thing and win the day and win the next day and win the week and month in my life right like um but at the same time too i think this is where the difference of sport and sports has a different mentality associated with it altogether. And I think yeah, that it's like two totally different things. It's, they you know what I mean? I think that like, I'm like, okay, like you can still be winning. And I think a lot of times like you, you, you win because you've overcome a failure point. Right. Yeah. And you win because you're having uncomfortable conversations. I'm actually yeah. about to go have with one with somebody today. You know what I mean? Um, and this yeah. one is actually directly related to like, dude, you can't tell me the day before that, like, there, you know, there's a debit on your account that like, you know, like a lot of these things are really up in the air and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, no, no. Like I run a business, right? Like we're both business owners, man to man, like one day's notice. And I'm like, I was really busy. Sorry, I didn't get into canceling your account for a day. And I do feel bad, right? But this is the reality of it is like, you came to me with a problem and we have to work over to get it. And I think I kind of know what the issue is, right? Of like, what's going on because you know, I'm building a rapport with uh, the other person who's also working with me, which is his fiance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, oh, now he's, you know, I'm like, uh, it's a tough conversation, man. But like, I got to feed my family too, right? I can't have one day's notice. Like, do me, do me a favor, do me a solid. There's a reason why we had this conversation, you know, um, and, and, and built this, right? So now I have to be uncomfortable. I feel like a failure because I like, I, as, a, as a good person, I know that like, I should just, I should have figured it out quicker, right? But in my head, I'm like, do, yeah. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, in order for me to win and to continue to be a nice guy, I have to not, I have to be an asshole today. And it's a, it's a, it's a weird mindset, right? Cause I know the only way that I'm going to win out in this is if I practice doing this with people, because you can't do that to individuals, right? I don't yeah. have a policy in place for a reason. You know, it's like, Hey, out of the goodness of my heart, just, just let me know. Give me time. Right. We'll figure it out. Give me, give me more time than one day. Right. Um, and so like, now I'm going to have this conversation and I'll be like, Hey, you don't need to use this today, right? This is me like maybe saying on the hook for you guys, but when you signed up, I told you we were trying to get you guys ready for your wedding in six months, right? I understand you're being met with some resistance, right? But like, how does this affect me, me personally, right? And, uh, and my family, and again, how I feed them, right? I'm going through shit too, man. Like, you think it's easy? Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's, yeah. it's hard because it's like, as a coach, like I've had that with, had a big one with a client where this person prepaid for a whole kind of like almost like a year and with that being that's almost said, why like, i don't do prepayments because it's like do, i know that it's such a long time commitment that's why you know? and i was like i was like you know i i learned that i kind of got burned and i was like but basically they're like oh well i did three months of it like instead of the whole year i want to do this i'm like we got nowhere near your goal like you said you wanted to commit and that's what like i've been learning as a business owner as a coach like with this different different mm -hmm. prepays and different things and just realizing like you know mm -hmm. i'm starting to get really selective with my clients like with my personal clients outside of the day-to-day -day work that i had like for example yeah. having like a very dialed in like questionnaire and then on the phone like drilling them hard with questions i'm like are you going to do what i ask are you going to do these things like will you do this this and this and if it's like anything just feels like a doubt i'm like we're not a good fit like we just really aren't <laughs> like and i don't care like i'd rather have that person go with somebody else because at the end of the day for me like as a coach for me i expect results and i demand results because that's what i demand of myself and i you see that in my tenure if you look at my clients you can look at what they've done and it's just like like i'm just a small piece of that by the way for those listening it's not like i did anything i just said hey these are what you're gonna do you know um, yeah yeah but like when I'm working with someone, it's like, come on, dude, like mm -hmm. 
you 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 commit it to something don't don't flip and change the script because that does put a strain on the business that does put a strain on the me personally you, you, I you, felt yeah, you, too, you, you occupied you occupied two spots right because it was two people coming in which you think is a better deal right but realistically it's like well i feel like as a, a small business owner i should give this person maybe a little bit of a, a you know like some assistance because it's two people paying towards one you know they're separate goals but as a as a commonality like you know like uh like a common household right yeah so it's a, it's a little bit harder so like yeah put that into the equation too i tried to like be very uh what's the word very fair like, fair with that yeah because it's like i have that you know thing uh have a little bit of leeway to like make that work um mm -hmm. and you know ultimately you know again like to the, to the concept of winning i want this person to still win right i want yeah. him to get to his goals right and for one thing to happen like this and again too like i know i need to talk to them now i'm not doing this via i was like hey we can talk via phone call right so that we can we can figure this out together and again too like if right now is not the right time cool right i'm gonna hold it and you have another month at some point in time but i just needed notice right like i get it that situations occur right but you still like i had a crack in my fucking windshield on my on my car it was a thousand dollar fix that shit happens yeah. all the time you think i like you know what i mean like i didn't want to pay it but i figured it out right yeah so either we're figure gonna figure out. this out together right we're gonna come to something that we can win together for this month and we can be done right you can yeah, go on exactly. our way or you can go fix your things and we can go fix this at a later time you have a month to you know with me you know it's banked as a credit and i have again like I don't want my time to be wasted, right? We're, we're, I'm yeah, putting yeah. Too much, I've been putting too much money into myself of education to not be helping people. So exactly. I want you to win, right? I um, do want to put a caveat here. I do want to put a caveat yeah. here. For the people that are like, man, they're kind of going off about like, oh, coaching clients. If they want to cancel, they want to cancel. Yeah, 100%. I'll just be real with you. Um, what's the fastest way to get results, really, is we all this information is free. Is all this information is free, right? Mm -hmm. Having accountability helps. Having a coach helps. Whether that's in your finances, in your fitness, in your nutrition, in building your business, whatever it is. Like I have a coach in my business. You invested in yourself. That's like the same thing like paying your damn bills at the house. If you decided to do that, like stick to it, right? It irks mm -hmm. me that like people do that. But I get it because it's one of those things where it's like, okay, cool. Like it's an expense. But it's like, come on. You had this goal. Because I'll be honest. Every time someone leaves me as a as a client, I don't see where the results go. I I don't think maybe one in a hundred, but like I've never seen clients like get results after they stop working. They're like, I'll figure it out. Yeah. I'm like, Kobe I have best, not man. seen it. I haven't Kobe. seen it. I wish you the best. Find somebody. But I have not seen it. And yeah. with the backing of like the education that we put in ourselves, the all that. I'm not trying to be malicious or like rub no. people off in the wrong way, but I'm just being honest. I just haven't seen in, yeah. Even in business, like when I don't listen to my coaching business, I see my business flunk. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm using myself as an example. Like I fail too. So yeah. And again, like I'm being a good guy and not like putting you into like a, a again like into a place where you know what we need more things in writing. You're committing to this amount of time. I'm not bill you for yeah. this, right? Like yeah, we're not trying to be like so that. Not trying yeah. to be like that because I know people that are like that. I know companies that are like that. Yeah. Right? Right. But again, too, it's like, you know, I don't want to be taken advantage of. I wanted to, you know what I mean? Like, um, and again, too, like I was being courteous. I actually was waiting on like giving him uh, the link. I was like, hey, we'll figure it out. Let's talk about it. You know what I mean? But when the like, you know, when that when that um, came to fruition of like because he, he had a buddy kind of pay for the first months for for him and his fiance as like a wedding, you yeah. know, ongoing wedding gift to help them get ready for it, which was a great great you know great that's a thing. great way great, to get by the way guys <laughs> great friend right to get, him, get friend, them going to be quite honest you know um and i was like awesome you know and you know we spent like i was like you know what don't worry we're gonna figure it out let's make sure that the again the rate is right right um i can be flexible with that you know and so then <laughs> i you know because i waited a couple days right now this is happening as a result of that this basically this is like the world saying hey you should have sent it out immediately right so I know now, as soon as somebody talks about something and I'm being courteous, it's just gonna come back and give me some plaque at the end of the day and give me a headache, right? It and Kobe will. Kind of said it best, like you said, like we're investing time, but I'm, I'm taking time away from my family with my kids to help you become a better version of you through all yeah. my ups and downs, through all my experience to help you win, right? And, you know, again, in, in the grand scheme of life right now, like I feel as if I'm winning 
you know, like going leaps and bounds with so many people due to the connections that I'm building. I'm yeah, winning yeah. in so many areas that matter so much. I don't want it to be something that has to deal with this. And again, money's a hard thing. You know, again, like if we have a, it's a adult tough conversation, conversation for some people, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. And again, like if we have an adult conversation about this today, and I'll talk about this on the next one too, and I have to refund him, I will totally do that because he, because we got to, you know, he told me what it was. He helped yeah. himself by winning that day, going to something that was uncomfortable. And again, I hate that money has to be sometimes the catalyst for that. But like time and time again, you know what? Money's leverage the for accountability. It, leverage one. Yeah, one of one of my one of my members before he's like, look, you're physically, you know, mm -hmm. you're 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 physically invested. You're doing the workouts. You're emotionally invested because like you you're here. Um, you're mentally invested. Like you got your schedule set. But are you? fiscally or financially invested because some people say that but when the rubber meets the road you know some people will find a way to back out because workouts are hard all right meal prepping is hard <laughs> like doing doing all this stuff is hard and you start like resisting and here's the thing you know what you're resisting you're not resisting me you're not resisting marcos as a coach you're listening to this you know what you're resisting you're resisting yourself you're resisting your change you're going from this version of you to this next version of you and this is what you're resisting the change in the middle um it's uncomfortable as hell trust me i know my business coach tells me something and i'm like or mark is gonna have to do this awkward conversation and it's like but if he mm -hmm. resists it he will not grow and he will not change and he will not get closer to his goals because of it you yeah. have to and the thing is that's what a coach does when you feel that resistance you lean on them i don't know how many times my clients are, have come to me pissed and it sounds like they're pissed at me but it's not they're pissed because or frustrated not pissed but frustrated overall because they're like well i don't know what to do and i'm like I asked two, three questions and they're like, huh, I never thought about it like that. And then they found a solution to their own problem. And guess what? That's what a coach does. So I hope you come to this conclusion uh, really yeah, well. Yeah, I'll Marcus. give it, I'll give an update. I'll give an update on the next one about how it comes out because in order for me to get to what this book was talking about, I got to win uncomfortable things, right? You do? Balls in my, balls balls in my court. Yeah. Job, job, to me, job ain't done, right? That's what Kobe said. Ain't done, job ain't done, ain't done, right? We haven't won yet with you. Right. I'm trying to break through the current situations to get you to become the best version of yourself. Right. And I think about it, about all people I'm working with, whether it's a patient or a client every single day. Like I go yeah. to bed thinking about the people that I, you know, I want to hopefully impact. And I don't know how. And it's a two way street. <laughs> Dude, it's 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 like I don't know what is, it is, is, but it. being a coach, being a coach, like, I mean, I remember at one point, like all that's all it took of my life, like clients, like I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm going to really try to solve this client's problem come up with 50 different algorithms and different meal all this and it's just like i don't oh, think you just got to show up for them to talk to you you just got to show up to talk to them vice versa you know what i mean like right, right before we got on this i called my client a little early hey i have something that kind of came up last minute do you mind if we, we and she was totally cool with it you know what i mean yeah. like that i don't know it again it, it is what it is. it is well we'll get we'll get there on the next week but um yeah let's so finish the, this off with our with our last few segments why don't we um What's yeah, the next segment yeah, we wanted to do, guys? Uh, so digestive enzymes are going to be our product of the week. Um, Ooh, so I'm going to put this up is, then. If you want to look at uh, Masszymes, M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S, from uh, Bioptimizers, I think this is a great so, one. Um, I think I've had this one. Mm -hmm. Um I think there's yeah, another one through like Zymogen or Orthomolecular. Um, and, okay, I've, uh, they're, I they're think very... I've had. I think I've had this one. Um, I think I've had this one because a buddy or like a coach had it and they gave me a few, not the mm -hmm. whole thing. Um, but I've had this one. I'll show it. Cause I had it on the screen earlier is I've had this one. The yeah. So naturals. don't, yeah. yeah. So, go, so going into, you know, using the GLP one agonist, I I'm thinking here, theoretically, we should try to facilitate better digestion as a whole. If it's getting slowed down. Right. Mm -hmm. So in my eyes, when I was like, Hey, if we're talking about this, we, we should probably bring up the mass supplement or something similar. Again, this one, I, I, again, I listen to a lot of people. Uh, I, I mean, Dan Garner talks about this. I feel like this dude is super educated in all dude, things Garner's related, great. you know, and he does such a great job of articulating it. I'm like in awe. I'm like, if I could become a fraction of what that guy is, I'd be so happy. And I'm really I wanted to work with him once I hit him up. He was like super expensive. <laughs> I could, <laughs> you know, that's, that's where he's at. He's, you know, he's like, Hey, I'm gonna charge you $1,500 a month. And you're like, <laughs> okay. Like you can charge a fighter because you it, can't charge me, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, what I love about this is this is good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep talking. 
so again, like in my head, I'm like, we're slowing it down. Right. And again, what should we be focused on? All right. We need them to get more protein because we don't want them to become catabolic. So yeah. therefore, if this is going to be a slower digesting thing by nature, anyways, um, and clo- including this, when mealtime rolls around mm-hmm. again, like, is there a benefit there? And I haven't reached the point where I have to use this with any of the, the patients that are on it currently. Um, but I'm like, you know what, this might help, you know, and, uh, I'm talking about it now, bringing it up in conversation, how does your digestion feel as a result of this? And I mean, man, I have one guy, it's been, I, I want to say he's lost 20% of his body weight using, um, using it. And, but also, I mean, consistent workouts focused on his yeah. protein, you know, yeah. on his next scan, when he comes in, I can only imagine, uh, what he's going to look like. And again, I, I want him to still be facilitating, you know, positive changes, not just purely like you just said, like, oh, you lost 60 pounds, but half of it was muscle. We don't, we don't want that. We don't want coaches. that. Yeah. yeah. So what I love about longevity. this. Yeah. What I love about the, the mass ends is really great. Um, you know, particularly I've worked with this with women, particularly, I don't know what it, it just really helped them. Um, mm-hmm. I think it has to do with like time of month, um, gut stuff. And, you know, I was listening to a lot more stuff, uh, with women, like di- digestion for women is it's a very finicky place because it affects so many things and up and down the chain with hormones and, and it's, it showcases certain things with hormones. So if their stool isn't great, like this was a help with, especially with a lot of women that like, for example, I just had a call today. She's like, you know, I do great with protein. I just can't have certain proteins all the time. Um, this might be a great conversation to bring back with her because she's like, uh, you know, I need to bring up my protein, but it's hard sometimes with this one. And I'm like, okay, cool. So she's like, I like it. She likes egg whites, but she's like, it's hard for her. So I'm like, okay, maybe we take some protein enzymes because these enzymes are going to help break that down for you a little bit. Keep your gut, you know, going instead of mm-hmm. feeling like your stomach stuck. Let's keep the gut moving, you know? So definitely recommend this for sure, especially for trying to increase protein for people, um, yeah. especially with a GLP-1 agonist. Like, hey, if you're losing weight, but we're trying to maintain your protein intake at a one gram per body weight, for example, or like a certain amount of grams per day, it's a lot of protein. And if you're not feeling it, and if you're not feeling your gut moving, honestly, this is such a great, such yeah. a great thing. And I mean, we probably would need to also talk about like, how regularly are these people going to the bathroom, right? Like, that is a question that I haven't really gotten into too, too heavily. Um, we're gonna have to go feel, into that for sure. Another time. <laughs> no, but I mean, like asking the patients that uh, that are yeah. using it, because I know like for for me, the first person I was again, it was a woman. I'm like, hey, she's like, I'm like, she's like, Marcos is like, I'm kind of backed up. What's going on? She's like, this, uh, this sounds like too much. She's like, no, like, I'm assuming things are moving and turning and burning well, you know what I mean? It's unnatural for you to have a couple of days where you've missed the poop, you know? Um, yeah, and- wasn't there like a, they were talking about like someone that like one person said, hey, one in three days is a normal poop. That was like a weird like thing. I was like, no, no, <laughs> no, uh, yeah. please. No, yeah. it's like one, once or twice a day, please. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that seems to be something that could be um, to help. Us I want to like yeah. I want to put something else here as well, because I had a gut issue, guys, because I. All right. It's getting a little bit personal here, but I had shingles at one point. So I had a bunch of antibiotics, antivirals and um (laughs) and a steroid and marcos had to cover for me so thanks marcos but um yeah that messed with my gut so much that i knew i thank god i had a gut protocol um if you want the guys if you guys want the real gut protocol let me know i had a whole shebang but you know what's been really good that i introduced post afterwards really for the epithelium cells of the stomach and the the stomach cells and all that and the intestines psyllium husk so oh, you're gonna tell me you had some L-glutamine or something as well, and then some L-glutamine is great. I had, hey, like I said, if y'all want that gut protocol, you let me know because I had a whole protocol. But the psyllium husk was really good. I'll be honest with you, talking about mass enzymes and talking about you know your movement, the bowels. That's it's been a crucial one. <laughs> 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 you, you know yeah and feeding prebiotic fiber which you said psyllium husk really is right like helping yeah, yeah. replenish and i'm sure you're eating some more cultured vegetables and things like that to help fermented uh, yeah. resistant starches things like that mm-hmm. and again like it, it's like you know you just become more aware you bring it in for a while maybe you're again macros are a little higher to help you facilitate the health protocol um yeah. totally totally a cool one i think again to like i mean as we as as we get more conditioned to teaching people nutrition with this you know new thing right like looking at those little additions especially if they're like oh well, like but also too i mean like adding more bulk to somebody that has like a slower digestive rate as a result of yeah. the drug 
I mean, what does that look like? It, it's like interesting questions. And I mean, guys, this is what goes on in my head all the time. As when dude, this is what goes on with... my head. I'm trying to optimize <laughs> for things, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think the digestive enzymes. Again, if you're a little bit backed up, you're not going as regular as you like. You can get it as a masszyme or a digestive enzyme. Really, like the life extensions one's probably great too. Orthomolecular, yeah, I, I think, um, uh, Zymogen, depending on if you can order it through like maybe a physician partner or somebody that has an account there. Um, additionally, I just get into my greens powder and it seems to like, I'm like, I almost wonder if it's too much because like the regularity that I have is probably too frequent, but I guess I just eat too much food too, right? Nah, dude, that's just, that's just a great metabolism right there, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, um so yeah, I mean, I, yeah, dude, I mean, the last one was like, I know we wanted to maybe bring up, a. Uh, a study with like AIP protocols or, or carnivore, but I feel like we could just wrap it. I mean, there's Let's just wrap it. I think there's, there was a lot today. I think, I think the biggest message I would say for sure is look, we're entering a new world. Um, we have a new world order. We really do. And in 2035, in about one decade, 12 years, guys, half the world is going to be obese. And that's a trend. And, and that was on the news. And you know, most well, are we are, are we're already there in America. Are we not? Yeah, we're I there mean, in America. I think it's okay. actually more towards 60%, right? In America. And I don't say that to be like fear mongering and stuff like that, but it's it's like because I don't really like I think I believe the news sometimes just eyeballs attention, fear mongering. But just take that as statistical fact. In a, for an American, the average American is 17 pounds overweight. All right, that's the goal. Don't be 17 pounds overweight, right? You know, or hey, if half the world is obese like all this what does that mean for us as performance health coaches or people that are listening to this it's like well look yeah there are medicines glp1 agonists and you got the wagobis and Zempix. you've seen the commercials you're probably gonna go get that cool just don't forget just don't forget you still have other options you need to exhaust have you fully exhausted maybe walking 30 minutes a day you know prepping some meals or choosing a healthy alternative on the way out that doesn't mean don't have that Oreo cheesecake because I still will have that Oreo cheesecake. Um, maybe you need some digestive enzymes when you have that Oreo cheesecake. Um, people do and, that. And people do, do that. They use the digestive exactly. enzymes for like a cheat meal. And so like, yeah. I know that's another another useful way to use them. There you go, man. Dropping <laughs> yeah. bombs here. It's too much value. Too much value. And yeah. lastly, like the human condition, I think, is we want, we want, we want, you know, we want to win, like Tim Grover says in his book. But I think learning to vacate that want and learning to tempt our goals and align them because we can get so distracted in a ADHD world now with social media and all these things, news, all this, just getting really clear with where you want to be in terms of your diet, your lifestyle, and all these new informations. Because if anyone is listening to this podcast, I think our mission, Marcos, really mm -hmm. is we want to provide nuanced information to the general person that's trying to get healthy and that's just trying to shift their identity to maintain that health i don't think we're trying to get people that are like hey i'm here to be a sports performance that's another podcast i'm not here to be a biohacker that's another <laughs> podcast what we're really trying to do here is help somebody that's struggling whether they're a parent busy professional whoever it is go from where they're at now change and shift their identity to someone that's just just getting to healthy just healthy you know what i'm saying and yeah. how that person does that is different this is different for everyone but if uh if you can find a way just remember it's not perfect it's only perfect for you okay that's great man i think uh yeah sorry for the little side tangent but that message literally came up on my uh, on my phone at, in the middle with the, the winning thing. But again, too, I'm like, I have to figure out a new way to win this day. And, um, yeah. you know, again, winning can come in many sh shapes and sizes and uh, for, for different elements. And again, too, yeah. there's, while, while you want there to be a rush to get to whatever it is, um, you know, sometimes you have to go through some failures and some discomfort to help you grow yeah. as an individual. Um, and again, if you really have tried it all when it comes to, you know, things in weight, yeah, consider talking to, um, you know, consider talking to a coach, consider talking to somebody that can give you, if you are eligible for something that can help you make a big change. Um, uh, again, like we're, we're just here to kind of 
give our take on it, right? We're not, yeah. we're not doctors. We're not prescribing anything. We're just giving insight. We're just telling it how it is and how we're experiencing people. And again, when I tell you the joy on the three people I've talked to that are utilizing that because they, they finally figured it out. And they've also realized too, because I've talked about the, the cues of like what their food now looks like. They're like, yeah, I was eating way too much. I was, you know, and the energy I now have and the, the motivation I have because I see the result and I can keep it at bay. I mean, again, you can't really put a price on that. Can't put a price yeah. on it, man. You know, can't. and it's just like, and it's just like this and uh, every step of the way, like, again, you know, I have an individual, again, one of the individuals that's just working with me asked about it and I gave him my insight and I told him that there would be a, maybe a cost associated with it. But if you really feel like that, you can't make those, those three things stick, those things that it comes to control, portion control, mm -hmm. time of day, right. Or particular like macro flexibility and logging, right. Yeah. Then, then, you know, inevitably there's, or, or I guess like demonization of a category too, right. Um, you know, or cutting that yeah. out, um, then, then, you know, consider it. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, anything else to add or do you think we're good? I think we're great. Uh, you know, guys, just, just please give us some feedback, comment, like, share. Um, I think we're getting well way into this and I think we're finding what we're loving and we're finding what we're talking about. And I think our audience is coming together. If you guys can share, we'd love to get more people on and hopefully one day we'll be, uh, big enough to make some impact. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're doing it. We're just, I think if anything we've learned in this journey so far is, you know, to truly win at something, you just got to keep trying. You keep learning and get a little bit better each time and incrementally better. You know, at first it, again, it could be just straight linear and that's, that's fine. That'd be so uh, cool. <laughs> that'd be that'd so be, cool. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be cool here. Right. We're like, Hey, if that happens. Great. Right. If anything, I feel like I've had exponential growth in other areas. Maybe again, maybe not in terms of clout or, social media acclaim or you know even the views that we're getting you know it may yeah, all be linear now, just again, parts of your life everything looks linear at first and that's because the human mind is conditioned to look for linear patterns but when something blows up exponentially it's when you least expect it and it's when you probably put in a ton of work and time into those things so that compounding effect that hockey stick effect that you get is the sum of all those actions over time it'll multiply in a matter of time it's just, no, it, it shows up in so it'll, many it'll areas of life you know, so with up. that, guys, thank you for listening. I think this is episode 15 as we're recording it. Um, <laughs> I put it on so there. So many 15, now. So many know. now. So many now. Plus the we'll get to the point of, that, you know what, yeah. we'll just say, hey, this is the next episode and we'll be this at the, is the next episode. Or something. We don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, well Thanks, we're still guys. into the back end stuff. So, yeah, have a good one.